I dare say that everyone here would say yes to the statement of Scripture. With God, all things are possible. I don't think you'd be here if you did not believe in God. And the God to whom all things are possible. But maybe we stop right there and we separate man from God. And my purpose is to show you that we are not two, that we are one. That God actually became man, that man may become God. So let us now tonight give you my reasons for my claims. We turn to the book of John, the Gospel of John. And we are told that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Well, that's a mistranslation. The word translated among is the Greek preposition in, within. The Word became flesh and dwelt within us, in us. John used the plural us for the nature whereof we consist. That the Word of God, which is defined in Scripture as the creative power of God and the wisdom of God, did not take upon itself some one person among men. For then that one assumed would have advanced and no more. But Christ, to save all, did not make this man or that man his habitation, but dwelt in us. That same creative word that created the universe and sustains it dwells in us. Therefore, with God, all things are possible. And therefore, with man, all things are possible. So he states it in one book, Matthew, with God, all things are possible. But in Mark, he states it, all things are possible to him, meaning man, who believes. Can man believe? So this creative word is in us. Well, what is this creative word? It's your own wonderful human imagination. That's Christ in man. Man is all imagination. And God is man. And exists in us and we in him. The eternal body of man is the imagination. And that is Christ himself. The divine body, Jesus. We are his members. So when you say, I am, that's he. Now, can you believe that you are now the man that you would like to be, though at the moment of your assumption, reason denies it, and your senses deny it? Only just started. Plenty all right. Can you really conceive a scene, a scene which, if true, would imply the fulfillment of your dream? Just imagine it. Certainly you could imagine it. But the problem is, would you believe it? Would you believe in the reality of the thing imagined? If I could, this very moment, imagine myself into a state, any state at all, and dwell in it. Well, now, what is dwelling in it? Well, I am dwelling in it. Well, that's Christ. And that is the resurrecting power of the universe. So if I remain in a state, I will resurrect it and objectify it in my world. But I have to select it and enter the state. If the spectator could enter into any of these states in his imagination, approaching the state on the fiery chariot of his contemplative thought, what would it be like if it were true? How would I feel if I were now the man that I would like to be? How would I know that I could become it? Well, I first, as I assume that I am it, let me think of my friends. Those who really would rejoice with me were it true. Let me imagine that I am seeing them in my mind's eye. How do they see me? If what I am assuming is true, they should see me as I am seeing myself. And if they are friends, they should rejoice with me. So let me now assume that I am seeing, reflected on the face of a friend, that which, if I saw it, would imply he sees in me that which I have assumed that I am. Will that work? Try it. I tell you from my own personal experience it works. As we are told in Corinthians, do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? 
unless, of course, you fail to meet the test. Now we are challenged. He said, come test yourself and see. Well, this is how I test myself. If Christ is in me, and all things are possible to Christ, then I must find out who he is. Well, I have found him as my own wonderful human imagination. And because he dwells not only in me, he dwells in us, everything is possible to everyone in the world. And so you help man best by telling him who Christ is. You could give him all the things of the world that he needs. He'll come back for more tomorrow, unless he knows who Christ is. You can give the entire world to any one of us. They'll spend it, waste it, if they don't know who they are. But tell him who he is, and he doesn't need anything more than the knowledge of who he is and the application of that knowledge. For we are the often power. It doesn't work itself. I can tell you that your imagination is Christ. And maybe you'll believe me. But unless you actually take it to the point of working upon it and operating it, it means nothing. Well, if this night I really believe it, I would not allow the sun to go down in my sleep unless I feel myself right into the situation of the wish fulfilled. It need not a wish for myself, it could be a wish for a friend, for everyone in my world, because Christ dwells in all, and Christ is the true identity of every man, then everyone must be myself pushed out. It can't be another if God is one. Therefore I tell myself, as the seeming of her, what I would do were I you. And instead of giving him the thing that he needs physically, tell him how to get it for himself. What would you feel like if now you were the man that you want to be? How would you see the world if things were as you desire them to be? Now this is what I mean by living in the end.